the 1997 Chevrolet Malibu. Its value is in the details. For our main story this month, we'll take a look at one of Malibu's import targets, the Toyota Camry. We'll see the surprises the redesigned Camry has in store for its owners in The Frustrated Fisherman. On the domestic side, we'll get in and out of the Dodge Stratus to show you what shoppers won't find in the catalog in Stratus Secrets. And we've got a great sales tip from one of your peers at Bennett Chevrolet in Inside Selling Wire. We'll also give you the details on a special Malibu lease offer and insight into Malibu sales activity in Finance Mission Possible. In case you haven't heard, some people are saying the all-new Malibu is like a hot dog with everything on it. We'll find out why in Bang for the Buck. And for the latest industry news, stay tuned for Revelations Per Minute. It's all coming up in this edition of Inside Track. Hi, I'm Mike Kraft. Welcome to Inside Track. Malibu, the proud nameplate from Chevy's past, has returned in an all-new, high-quality mid-size sedan. And it's the Motor Trend 1997 Car of the Year. Motor Trend awarded Malibu its prestigious Golden Calipers Trophy because, quote, Malibu establishes a new benchmark within the domestic mid-size market based on its comfort and quietness, balanced power, attention to quality and safety, and its tremendous value, unquote. Also taking notice is AAA. In their 1997 autograph book, Chevrolet Malibu earned AAA top car in the $15,000 to $20,000 price class. And Kiplinger's personal finance magazine 1997 Car Buying Guide heralded Malibu as the best new car and best in class. And last, but certainly not least, Malibu was named 1997 Car of the Year by Automundo magazine. Well, it sounds like Chevrolet hit the mark with Malibu, and that was no accident. Through hands-on participation in the design process, known as designer in the dealership, and interviews with customers shopping import and domestic competitors, Chevrolet created a product with huge customer appeal. In essence, Chevy didn't design Malibu. Malibu is the sedan designed by America itself. And it has a strong competitive story, too. Based on a study Chevrolet conducted during the design process, mid-size sedan buyers want features usually found on luxury vehicles. <laughs> Some surprise. They value standard features like a powerful engine, anti-lock brakes, an automatic transmission, and air conditioning. So let's see how the base Malibu compares in each of these areas with the newest import in the mid-size segment, the Toyota Camry CE. Power, the heart of Malibu, is a standard 2.4-liter twin-cam engine with four valves per cylinder. Its output, 150 horsepower and 155 foot-pounds of torque. Camry's standard engine is a 2.2-liter twin-cam four-cylinder engine. Its horsepower is only 133, and its torque is 147 foot-pounds, giving Malibu an advantage with 17 more horsepower and 8 foot-pounds more torque. Anti-lock brakes. Four-wheel ABS is standard on every Malibu. To get ABS on Camry CE, it'll cost you $550 more. An automatic transmission, you'll find it standard on Malibu, but on Camry CE, it costs an extra $800. Air conditioning, well, you'll keep cool in Malibu with its standard air conditioning and front pillar mounted outlets, which provide circulation throughout the passenger compartment. In a Camry CE, you'll break a sweat. Air conditioning is an extra cost option, but if you decide to fork over the extra dough, you still may break a sweat when you find out how much it costs. Ready for this? $1,005. Now let's see how these features add up. A four-cylinder engine, standard on both Malibu and Camry. ABS, standard on Malibu, a $550 option on Camry. Automatic transmission, standard on Malibu, an $800 option on Camry. Air conditioning, standard on Malibu, a $1,005 option on Camry. And so we can make an equally equipped vehicle price comparison, we have to add an optional split-folding rear seat to Malibu because it's standard on Camry. 
So apply some arithmetic and you'll find there's only $210 of extra cost for Malibu. And Toyota charges an extra $2,355 to get the luxury features customers want. To figure total cost, just add base MSRP. For Malibu, that's $15,995 for a total of $16,205. But when we add Camry's base MSRP of $16,398 to its total extra costs figure, you get a grand total of $18,753. The advantage? Malibu by $2,548. Well, the new Toyota Camry gave Malibu a good run, but not for the money. Camry doesn't even offer customer-friendly features like breakaway mirrors and a retractable driver's side cup holder for lefties, which are standard on Malibu. And now let's visit our friend George Siegel. I heard he recently borrowed his brother's new Toyota Camry CE to go spring fishing. Let's see what happened in The Frustrated Fisherman. Frustrated is right, Mike. You know, at first I was really excited when my brother said, sure, go ahead, take the Camry for the weekend. Little did he know, I was going to be one of the first anglers out for some spring fishing, and my weekend catch was going to be traveling home with me. Mmm, dead fish, what a scent. But my initial excitement faded fast, very fast. Here's why. There I am with almost everything loaded into the trunk except my fishing net, which forced me to discover the hard way that Camry's trunk pass-through opening was too small. So to make it fit, I had to take all my gear out of the back seat and fold down both rear seats, which meant the stuff from the back seat had to go in the front passenger seat. It's a good thing I wasn't driving with someone else to the fishing hole. Once I got out on the road, things started out smoothly until I wanted to change the radio station. The station preset buttons are pretty small and at first glance I couldn't figure out which buttons were for the cassette player and which were for the radio. Plus in daylight hours, the gray on black labeling scheme was hard to see. And speaking of labeling, it is a nightmare under the hood too. Let me put it this way. Things like the washer fluid reservoir don't pop out at you. You have to do a little up close search to find what you're looking for. Plus, there's no map light. So when it started getting dark outside, I had a hard time reading the directions that my buddy gave me. And would you believe there's only one dome light to illuminate the entire passenger compartment? And of course, there's no footwell lights. So when I accidentally dropped my flip phone, it was a challenge just trying to find it in the dark. And the story gets worse too. I was driving on the highway and all of a sudden I got a flat tire. So I pulled over and it went something like this. I was so mad that at first I kicked the tire a few times. <laughs> that made me feel a little better, but not for long. To get to the spare, I had to remove the trunk carpeting first, which meant that all my gear had to come out. Then after the carpeting was gone, I had to unscrew this thingamajig and remove the spare tire cover. I got the tire, but where were the jack and tire iron? After a little searching, I found the tire iron on the back of the cover and the jack in the corner of the trunk. But I could hardly get the tools off and I couldn't remove the jack. It seemed like it was glued into its compartment. So I looked for some instructions on how to remove it, but I couldn't find any. I checked the owner's manual, but that didn't help much. The tools were in so tight, the directions didn't help loosen the grip. So I gave up and decided to get roadside service. When I tried calling for service, my phone battery died. No biggie. I hooked up my auxiliary power outlet adapter. Believe it or not, it turned out to have a short. That caused me to blow a fuse. I had to replace it, but I couldn't find the fuses. That sent me back to the owner's manual. According to that, the fuses were located behind this little change compartment, or whatever it is. All I had to do was squeeze the sides and it would pop right out. Well, I can tell you one thing, there was no way that thing was going to pop out without a hair pulling struggle. Luckily, a local trooper stopped and took me to the nearest telephone. And there was no question in my mind who to call first, but my brother. As I sat waiting for him to rescue me, I thought, all this was no accident. My big brother is still trying to torment me, just like when we were kids. 
So, George, it sounds like the only fishing you did was through the Camry owner's manual. Unfortunately, you're right, Mike. But did you know that if you had taken Malibu on your trip, you could have come back an expert angler? After all, Malibu would have gotten you there and would have made it easier to load your equipment. The trunk pass-through with Malibu's split-folding rear seat is approximately nine inches wider, so you wouldn't have had to fold down both seats. Plus, Malibu's radio controls are easy to see and use because of the distinct labeling and big buttons. The labeling under Malibu's hood is easy to read, too, avoiding confusion. And as far as lighting, Malibu has map lights, a dome light, and footwell lights. So no matter how clumsy you are, you can see what you dropped. When the time comes to change a tire, you wouldn't have to remove everything from Malibu's trunk. You'd only have to move the items directly on top of the spare. And you don't have to remove all the carpet. Just unscrew the center retainer nut that secures the tire, remove the cover, and take out the spare. The jack and tire iron are conveniently located underneath in a removable case that doesn't hold on to them for dear life. And fuses? Just open the driver door, flip the compartment open, and voila. Well, I guess everyone has to live and learn, but George, why don't you go check out the Malibu? It has all the features you need at a price you can afford. Now you sound like my mother, Mike, but I will go take a look. And now let's hop the Pacific and compare the base Malibu with one of its top domestic competitors, the Dodge Stratus base sedan. To get started, let's revisit those luxury features mid-size sedan customers are looking for. Power. A four-cylinder engine is standard on both Malibu and Stratus. But get this, the Malibu engine is a 150 horsepower, 2.4 liter, and Stratus, a 2 liter that produces only 132 horsepower. You can get a 2.4 liter engine on Stratus too, that is, if you're willing to pay $450. And with it, you get 150 horsepower, the same as the standard engine in Malibu. Anti-lock brakes, they're standard on Malibu, a $565 option on Stratus. Automatic transmission, standard on Malibu. A $1,050 option on Stratus. So to get a powertrain like Malibu's, Stratus buyers would have to spend an extra $1,500. And to save some time, let me figure total cost. Oh, that's easy for Malibu. Uh, let me see, uh -huh. standard, mm -hmm. standard, standard. Plus, we have to add a split folding rear seat. That's $210. Then we add in Malibu's base MSRP. So Malibu's total cost is $16,205. Figuring total cost for Stratus isn't as easy. Let's do that. Let's see, $450 plus $565 plus $1,050. All that equals... $2,065 in options for Stratus. Whoa! Plus base MSRP of $15,525, giving us a grand total for Stratus of $17,590. That gives Malibu a $1,385 price advantage. When it comes to standard luxury features on an affordable midsize sedan, Stratus is no challenge for Malibu. Now, I know Sonia Crosby recently spent some time with the Dodge Stratus. Let's see what she discovered in Stratus Secrets. Thanks, Mike. Well, secrets is a good word for it, because Stratus shoppers won't discover these things in a catalog or in the showroom, like the truth behind its cab-forward design. True, a cab forward design can provide more interior space, but I made a few measurements of my own. And Dodge did move the cabin forward, but at the expense of the front overhang. You see, the driver is three inches closer to the front bumper than a Malibu driver, but there's almost no difference in distance from the powertrain. So in this case, the Stratus cab forward design is just a styling exercise that merely overhangs the windshield about five inches more than Malibu. And the bottom line, there's no great leap forward for Stratus when it comes to passenger comfort and room. In fact, Stratus has less interior volume than Malibu. Now you need to be sure to consult your product and comparison guide for proof and numbers. Now let me show you what shoppers will overlook at the back end of Stratus, the trunk. Look how narrow the opening is. That could make it difficult to load large cargo items like a bike. But loading a bike in Malibu isn't as difficult. Its maximum trunk opening is approximately 10 inches wider. 
And Malibu allows flexibility in carrying cargo with its optional split folding rear seat. That's a feature you can't get on Stratus even as an option. On Stratus, a full folding rear seat is the only trunk pass-through feature available. I bet that'll surprise a backseat passenger who has to cuddle the cargo. Now let's take a look at the rear seat when it's not folded down. I found a few surprises here too. Surprises like no center armrest and a hidden cup holder. Just fold it down and you have one, right? Wrong. There are actually two, see? The other day my nephew was back here and he was the one who found it. I guess sometimes it's a good thing that kids play with everything. But I wonder how long it takes Stratus owners without kids to find it. That's a good point, Sonia. It does look like Dodge needs to put a special label there, something like attention, people without children, two cup holders enclosed. Thanks for sharing those secrets with us. And now it's time to share a sales tip from the Inside Selling Wire. This month, our tip comes to us from Charles Hawes at Bennett Chevrolet in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. As he tells us, sometimes it's okay to say, I don't know, to a customer. Here's the tip. When a customer asks a difficult question on the lot or during a test drive, don't give a quick guess or possibly a wrong answer. Simply say, I don't know the answer, but I will find out as soon as I get back to my desk where my product guides are. Well, we certainly agree with you, Charles. After all, customers do their homework and oftentimes ask questions to see if the salesperson is knowledgeable about the vehicle. So thanks for the tip. And be sure to keep an eye out for the Inside Track t-shirt heading your way. And don't forget to send us your sales tip on the Inside Selling Wire. Now let's see what special lease offers are available on Malibu in Finance Mission Possible. Thanks, Mike. I'm here today with John Hughes. He's the Assistant Brand Marketing Manager for Malibu. John, thanks a lot for joining us today. Welcome. I understand that there's a special lease offer currently available for Malibu. Can you give us some of the details? Sure can. Our 36-month lease offer on Malibu uh, has a payment of $239 a month on a very well-equipped car. Well, power windows, power locks, power mirrors, rear of fog, and cassette. And it comes with a down payment of $1,450. Well, how does that compare to the competition? Well, we feel it compares very well because the Malibu is very well contented, has a very high level of standard equipment, mm -hmm. plus these additional options. Oh. So we think it stacks up quite well. Great. Now, John, I've heard that there are some buyers already seeking out Malibu, even though the ad campaign isn't in full swing yet. Now, what can you tell us about who these early Malibu buyers are? Now, as you know, Malibu was designed and intended for the smart shopper. Now, these buyers, these shoppers, are doing their homework and they've been learning through third-party endorsements what a great car the Malibu is coming in and, and buying them. Mm -hmm. As a result, we're right on target with all of our demographics and actually exceeding our targets on education. Oh, that sounds great. What is Malibu doing to attract those previous import owners into the Chevrolet dealerships? Well, before the advertising started, again, we have a lot of very positive press, and Malibu has won more awards than any other, than any other mid sized car. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the Motor Trend Car of the Year Award, uh, right. it, which is fantastic mm -hmm. for Malibu. We've also won the, uh, the AAA uh, Top Car Award in the $15,000 to $19,000 range. Mm -hmm. uh, Kiplinger Magazine gave us two awards, Best New Car and Best Car in the $15,000 to $18,000 range, and we're also the Automundo Car of the Year. And I, I think what's happening is when consumers are getting into a Malibu, they're really uh, observing a level of refinement that they'd find on cars that cost a whole lot more. Mm. Not to mention all the standard safety and comfort and convenience features that they get on Malibu that are standard, that they have to pay a whole lot more money for on, on a lot of the imports. Mm -hmm. So they're really recognizing this value, this value story. They've done their homework. They know a good deal and a, and a good car when they see one. One last note is uh, Malibu is keeping a very good company. Mm -hmm. uh, Folks who are shopping other cars like the Accord, the Camry, and the Taurus are actually coming in and buying Malibu. Those three other cars are in the top six other uh, shopping choices. In terms of popular equipment or models, how do sales look for Malibu so far? Well, right now, Malibu is running about 42% LS or the up-level model and around 60% V6. And that's right on track where we thought it would run. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you have got a great and exciting product in Malibu, Jeff. Oh, we're thrilled. Uh, what we're doing is we're attracting a lot of folks to our Chevrolet dealerships who haven't been to our dealerships in quite a while. So this is really our opportunity 
to put our best foot forward mm -hmm. and really help these folks with their transportation needs. And it looks like we have a, a tremendous product to do that. Our production is ahead of schedule. Our quality is right on. Uh, and we're, we're ecstatic about it. Great. Well, thanks a lot for your input, John. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like Chevrolet's Before You Buy an Import Drive a Malibu Challenge is proving to those import buyers that Malibu's value is in its details. And with the leasing information, it'll certainly help make Malibu Finance a mission possible. Thanks, Sonia. Just in, George Siegel tested the all-new Malibu, and now he's here to show us how it offers more bang for the buck. Well, Mike... I didn't waste any time in checking out the Malibu you told me about, and not only does it have the standard luxury features I want, it's got a lot of other great features too, like a cup holder for lefties, two auxiliary power outlets, a dash mounted ignition that's easy to see and reach, two rear seat cup holders that are easy to find and hold juice boxes, and a glove box with the handle on the far left side. That makes it easy for the driver to get to while on the road. And inside the glove box, there's room for more than just gloves. In fact, you can fit your gloves, scarf, earmuffs, and a hat in it, and still have a little room left over. When I look at Malibu, I think it's like a hot dog with everything on it. You see, the hot dog is like the powertrain, you know, the substance. The bun, safety construction. And if you like your hot dogs like mine with all the stuff on it, then the ketchup, mustard, onions, and relish are all the standard features that you get with Malibu. And just like a hot dog, the Malibu is very affordable. It has a starting price of less than $16,000. And the competition? Well, to me, they're like those plain convenience store hot dogs that you pay too much for, and many times they leave a bad taste in your mouth. I can't wait to show the Malibu to my brother. I've got it all planned out. After he starts drooling over all the great standard features, I'll conveniently let him know how little it costs. He thinks he has the best of everything, well, not this time. Way to go, George. It took, what, only 20 years to show up your brother? Just kidding. Oh, by the way, that's a nifty Chevrolet Parker you have on there. Thanks. Your Chevy sweater's pretty sharp, too. Oh, well, thanks for noticing. And you can order Chevrolet wearables like ours by calling this toll-free number. And now let's take a look at industry news in Revelations Per Minute. Topping the news, the 1997 Chevrolet Lumina was named the best ride in Machine Design's Best Ride Contest. Did I just say that twice? Anyway, we appreciate the honor. In other news, General Motors and Walt Disney Company have teamed up for Test Track, GM's renovated exhibit at Walt Disney World's Epcot Center in Orlando, Florida. The Disney-designed exhibit features a ride simulating GM's proving ground in Milford, Michigan. Test Track is set to open in early May. Also making headlines, Toyota introduced its new coupe at the recent Chicago Auto Show. The Solara, which is based on the Camry platform, will go on sale in the summer of 1998. Although Solara was unveiled as a convertible, Toyota hasn't decided whether to build a soft-top version. Also unveiled at the show was the 1998 Chevrolet Camaro. As this picture reveals, Camaro will be sporting a new hood, front fenders, headlamps, and front fascia in the next model year. It will also be offering the new 5.7-liter LS1 V8 engine. Finally for the news, Ford Motor Company is making headlines this month for its decision to drop the Thunderbird after the 1997 model year. Now, I know in our November issue of Inside Track, we reported that Ford would continue production of the T-Bird, and it would be getting a beak lift for 98. Well, what can I say? The Sport Coupe sales are low, and Ford can't seem to make up its mind. But current plans indicate that Thunderbird will be out of production until after the turn of the century. However, production of the 1997 model will continue through this calendar year. Ford has also decided to drop the Aspire after the 1997 model year. Production of the subcompact for North America will end in June. And now we've got to be making tracks as we're gearing up for our next edition of Inside Track when we'll get a look at Chevrolet's winner on the racetrack and the street, Monte Carlo. For Sonia, George, and myself, we'll see you then. <laughs>